Okay, so here's our instruction sheet. And here is step one. Okay, I'll uh, zoom down into that just to make it a little bit easier. Right, there we go. Step one. I even have to bring it up a bit. Okay, we start off, we uh, get the um, gear levers and all that kind of systems sorted. Then we got to fit that with that, but we've got uh, to do that section as well, right? And then put the top to the bottom and stick in the bits that we've just after doing. So, it doesn't really say do this one first. So obviously this one first, this one second, put the those two together onto that and onto that. I'll get that done, we'll come back, we'll have a look, we'll see how all, how that's gone so far. Um, you know, uh, like I said, that plastic is kind of weird, um, it's a plastic I'm not used to, I'm just wondering will the uh, will it stick t with uh, the conventional um, Tamiya Extra Thin, or will I have to get some, try something different on it? We don't know, we'll see, we'll see how things go. Okay, so we get that done, come back, we'll have a look at it. Okay, so there's step one, and as you see, they're all marked off, so therefore, they're done. Right. Um, no problems with the uh, with the glue. It seems to have uh, have worked. Okay, so give me an extra tin works on this. Um, no problems with fit. Everything fitted in nicely. Uh, Bit of clean up all right um, on some um, as you can see them see them here in these there's some uh, ejector pin marks but the, I've left these ones on purpose just to show you okay you can see how soft that plastic is gone Okay, so the plastic is very soft. Um, very easy to remove anything. Anything needs to be cut off or shaved. Very, very easy. So, if anybody ever does get their have this kit in their stash or get their hands on it, when it comes to doing a bit of sanding, just be, just be just be a bit careful, a bit mindful of how um, how how soft this this plastic actually is. Uh, there was a little. Um, Sprue gate there. Anyway, okay, there's step one. Right, so step two. Right, step two has us starting off by taking off this piece here. Now it's marked off as 10C, right, as you can see there, 10C. Now, as you see, I'm after scribbling in 11C underneath it because this is piece 10C. And that is not that piece. Okay, so this is piece 10, 11C. All right, I'm after taking, I'm after cutting it down. I'm after taking off that piece, sending it up, and cleaning it off. Um, so there we go. It's actually 11C, not 10C. Um, yeah. Wow. You know, major boo boo there, but uh, we're not going to lose any sleep over that. So we're going to be fitting this. We're going to be fitting our two chairs, um, and we're fitting the back on. Okay, and that's basically uh, step two, and then we're into step three. So I'm going to do step three as well because it's literally just one or two pieces there with step two. So step three, all right. Step three, we're off cutting pieces again. Um, we've got our sides, they've got to go on. We're cutting another little bit here. Um, we're attaching the back, we're attaching the, the hood, the front grille, support for the front grille. Um, I, to be honest with you, I, they're on the um, the the Hanamag thing as well. I, I don't know whether they're um I don't think they're an exhaust but what they are I do not know, okay? So um no 
goes in here to the side. If you ever looked at the side of the henna mag, it's got those yokes on it, but they're not covered over by a box. This one is. Okay, so we've got those. We've got some handlesy things to go in here. Um, fitting our lights or the no tech light and uh, a few more bits and pieces and the uh, mirrors. Uh, lots of fiddly little pits that are going to be sticking out. Uh, should I fit them? Sure, why not? Why not? I'll fit them all. <laughs> okay, so I get step two and step three done. Then we'll come back, we'll have a look at step two and step three. And uh, just like we did with step one, we'll, we'll have a quick discussion on it. Okay. Right, okay then. So, step three. Okay, we put on the, uh, the sides. And they're all done. And here we are so far. Okay. Now, the base of this was quite warped. Okay, and because it was quite warped and pushed down, obviously it's going to create a couple of um, a couple of gaps here and there. Now I'm not worried about them at the moment. Okay, not too worried about them at the moment because they can always be filled. And we'll see what extent you know it needs filling, and it's pointless going filling them now. I mean, I could go off and fill that gap now, and then find out later on that something goes over it. I mean, I could look through the instructions and find that out, but I'm not going to. Um, I usually wait until the very, very end until everything is constructed, and then go around it and see. Okay, well, this needs a bit of filling. That needs a bit of filling. Um, you know, things like that. Also, I had a, a kind of a slight incident with the carpet monster. I'm still in the process of looking for it. Um, I've looked for it twice. I still can't find it, but it is. It's one of these little things here. Okay. Right. One of the the hood holder downers basically holds down the uh, the bonnet of the hood or the engine cover, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Okay. It's one of them. Um, it just literally. I, I was putting it on with tweezers, and the next thing just probably held it a little bit too tight and pinged pinged off behind me and uh, because of the size of it it's practically impossible to find if I do find it it'll be one of those uh, as Bob Ross would have called it a happy accident so anyway we move on now to step four okay so I'll close the instructions again now I have to be very careful with the instructions because somebody asked me to send them on the instructions um, if I would kindly do that. And I said, no problem. When I'm finished with it, I'm going to send you on the instructions. They basically have this kit, but they don't have the instructions. So I'd gladly send them on to them. Um, and, that's the, and that's the case with with, uh, with any of you out there. Um, if you, you have a kit and you don't have the instructions for it, if I have them there, I'll send them on to you. Because I always hold on to the instructions. I, I usually throw away the box. I hold on to any, say, decals I don't use. But uh, I, I, I throw away most of the sprues that are left because there's always extras on them. And I, I was holding them for a while, and you end up with a, a big thickened box of bits and pieces you're not going to use. Um, I held on to a couple of storagey bits and things like that that I might use, but uh, in general, I usually I usually just uh, f them away. But uh, instructions, I always keep instructions, and uh, if anybody. Um, is doing any of the kits that I've done previously and they just happen to have you know either bought a, a kit second hand the instructions weren't in it or the instructions spilled something on them and destroyed the instructions if I have them there just ask me for them I send, send me your address I'll send them on to you no problem no problem at all so anyway enough of that uh, let's get down and have a look at more of this uh, the, the, the instructions and what I'm going to be doing right so we're putting in the, uh, the, the the truck bed, the steering wheel. Okay, we've got the uh, the box for the other side. Right, that side we have that box in. There's another box now to go in down here. Okay, that's that one there. Um, there's also the side panel there that holds on the um, the mirror and whatever this thing here is 
I would have thought that, that was a mirror, but I don't think it is because there's clearly a mirror there. So whatever that is, I do not know. Um, there's other other bits and pieces, shall we say? They've got got to go in. I mean, that's that there that goes in there. That sits in underneath. I don't know what it is. Probably part of a tool chest or something like that. Okay, we've got our divisional marker there that goes on there. Um, and the uh, the tow hitch. So we'll get them done. Um, I won't be putting in the glass. I always leave that off until uh, the painting is finished. And if, obviously, if I'm not going to put in the glass, I'm not going to put in the um, the windscreen wipers. So I won't be putting them in either. And what I can do with them is I can even mark it now. I mark them in orange to show that I'm going to do them afterwards. Okay. Right, so that indicates basically by having them marked in orange that uh, come back after and do them. So when I go, when I get to the end of the construction, I go back over the thing and say, "Ah, oh, look, I have a piece here to add in there, and I have pieces to add in there as well." Okay, so we get them done. Come back then, and as you will have a look at it, quick discussion how it went, any problems, uh, how's your father, and all that kind of stuff. So I get them done. Come back to you. I mean, uh, carry on then constructing. Okay. Okay. So now we've done step four. All right. And if you have a look at step four, it's basically the uh, the, the bed there that sits onto the back that the gun is going to go on to um, tow hitch mirrors for that side. Uh, storage box that goes at that side. We fitted the uh, the windscreen. I haven't fitted the glass or the windscreen wipers, as you can see there. They're marked in orange, and also fitted the steering wheel. And as you see, there's one little piece here not marked off, and that's this little. Uh, I think they're divisional markers. I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly what they are. Okay. Um, I think it's a command car insignia or something like that. I'm not, not a hundred percent sure. I've been trying to remember back to, to you know, I remember seeing that symbol on maps and things, but you know, the old memory ain't what it used to. But anyway, it's a relevant. I cut it off. I cleaned off the sprue, cleaned it all off, and everything else. Because believe me, every little piece, no matter what you do. It needs cleaning because there's small little seam lines, there's ejector pin marks. Now they're very easy clean, very very easy clean off because as I said the plastic is just so soft. Um, but uh, shall we say it just disappeared, literally disappeared. Um, I thought I might have even brushed it off the desk and I'm on a hardwood floor here, uh, it's a uh, sort of laminate flooring. And I cannot find it. I cannot find it. No, the flooring basically is the same colour as the plastic, but you know, I might find it down the line. <laughs> I might find it, and if I find it, I'll put it on. And it's driving me mental because I don't, you know, I know I, I, I kind of put it around here, but it's uh, it's after feckin' disappearing. Anyway, anyway, there we go. There she is at that stage. All right, there's our, 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 our flat bed. Um, that went on very very easy, very easy indeed. Um, we got our windscreen, okay, and it goes up and down. I don't want to push it too much because it's only really just after being glued. Um, and the one thing I did find, one thing I want to say about this kit is, if anybody is getting this kit or has this kit in their stash, like I said, that I'm not talking, I'm not talking about a newer version of it. I'm talking about this old version of it that has this uh, this type plastic. This plastic is very soft, and I said it was weird because it's unlike, say, the normal plastics we're used to, the normal styrene that we're all used to. Um, you know, it's kind of it's got a certain sort of brittleness to it. Um, when you put a bit of tamiya extra thin on it and put your two pieces together, it's dry in a couple of seconds. Um, even with the tamiya extra thin, uh, it's it, it takes a while to dry in takes a while for the uh, you know it softens the 
the uh, plastic. We don't like what it is supposed to do. It's like, it's, as we know, it's not a glue, it's a chemical. And what it does is it, it, it welds the plastic together. But um, it just stays soft for quite a long time compared to uh, when it's on the ordinary stirring. So just be careful, be mindful of that um, if you are doing it. Um, that's really all I can say about it. Uh, just loads of. Lo every piece needs to be cleaned off and the plastic is very very soft just be careful of the plastic okay right um we're moving on now to step six step six now we've got two rifles and they're inside in a little kind of a case thing right um oh as far as i know it doesn't say where those cases are but i think they go up here i'm not 100 percent sure let's check that where they go uh, yeah yeah they go yeah they go onto onto the um, they go up here for a finish right so we've got to make two of these we have to make two of these here um, with the rifles in it and the, the covers for them okay then we're into suspension parts so i'll get that bit done i'll get the suspension part here done um i think it's basically the front axle to be honest which i'm not 100 percent sure i can't really see and all i can see is that there's loads of little parts on it. We'll move on to the along the instructions yeah it's that whole front uh front axle assembly basically so um it's a uh, pretty intricate. So what I'll do is I'll I'll do these. I'll make the two of these. Um, I know that they don't get fitted till sort of down the line a bit. Actually, no, that's step six, step five. There we go. Step five. We've got our mesh and those pieces. Okay. Right. So I'll get these done, which is step five. And I'll do that, which is step six. So I get that done, then I'll be on to that. So I'll do these, and I'll do that. Okay. There's a close-up view of those for you. Right, the rifle racks, and we've got our mesh parts to put on. Right. So we'll get them done. We'll come back then. We'll have a quick look at that and we'll see how it all works out. Then we're into the suspension we worry about all of that then when we get there okay so i'll get them done come back and we'll have the old proverbial peak okay so those are little uh, bits of plastic they're after shaving off okay we've got all these done now all right they're all in place um it was kind of awkward i must admit in putting these on um i've had to use uh, super glue ca glue for uh some people to call it ca glue i still call it super glue super glue okay industrial grade super glue i must think uh my good friend simon kemp get me a couple of bottles of that thank you very much simon but uh yeah, um, it's basically uh, super glue on the uh, on the mesh, right? It's quite easy to do, and then on the back, then we put on the uh, ammo boxes, right? So here's uh, we got the two sides, the back, and the uh, little bits that go on the ends. Okay, so. That logo like that. Oops, there we go. That will all fit in like that around the uh, around our um, flatbed. Okay. So that's those pieces done. Not to be fitted yet. Okay. And also after getting. Um, The gun rack thingy me jigs done okay I have two of them okay 
Now they go on the, uh, the front bumpers here. Don't particularly like them myself. I think they're quite horrible. Um, I don't like the fit in them, but uh, you know that's not, that's it's neither here nor there. They, they fit on like that. Maybe it's just the fact that they're black and they kind of stick out that much. You know, um, I think they're they're freaking ugly. But having looked through uh, Tinterest and uh, getting loads of pictures and reference pictures and uh, videos and things. Yeah, on this version of it, they did have them, so... <coughs> if they're supposed to be there, then I might as well put them on. Anyway, right, we're now down to step seven. Step seven, like I said earlier on there, uh, we're, we're, we're putting together our, um, our front axle and drivetrain there for the uh, front wheels. Not drivetrain, but the front, front axle and steering uh, mechanism and all that for the front wheels. Um, we'll get it done, we'll see what it looks like. Uh, looks a bit fiddly. Um, but then again there have been lots of other little fiddly bits earlier on up around here and things and they all seem to go, go pretty okay. So we'll get them done anyway, so there's a close up look. Right. Of what I'm going to get done. So, I'll get them done, we'll come back, we'll have a look at it and uh, the usual quick discussion, you know, how it went, did it go as uh, neatly as planned and, and what does it all look like for a finish, okay? So, I'll get them done, come back, we'll have a look. Okay, so as you can see here I've all these marked off, so that means I'm after getting it all done. Um, I'm also after fitting it into where it's supposed to go. Um, I'm after making up the wheels, the main wheels, okay, even though I haven't actually got them fitted yet, I've them made up ready to fit, and I've fitted the uh, the drive sprockets here. I've also fitted the, um, the suspension arms there, both sides for the wheels, and the uh, idler arm that's done as well, okay. So the next part for me to do now would be to uh, do all the wheels and a couple of other little bits and pieces that have got to go on to it. So we'll have a quick look at that at this stage. Right, here we go. There's the, uh, there's all the suspension arms in place. Um, here's that uh, steering section as you can see. Now I must admit, uh, even though I've kind of bad mounted this kit quite a bit so far, uh, the fit in that was actually very very nice. Uh, it just clipped together, well it didn't clip together but if you know what I mean, it, it went together very very easy. Um, I still stand by my thing about the fact that uh, I'm not loving the kit. Uh, I do find that the uh, plastic is just a little bit too soft. It's a weird kind of, um, uh, I don't know, whatever it's, made, whatever it's made of. It's not the normal styrene that we're used to. So it just, especially I noticed in making up this piece here, normally you'd make that up and then, you know, put it aside for less than five minutes and that's solid. You know, with the uh, ordinary um, styrene and to me an extra thin glue and you know it wouldn't be you know 100% all set up but it would be solid enough that you can kind of fit it but uh, with this it was literally it was literally falling apart um, by touching it so I literally had to make it and sit it down and, and, and same again just leave it overnight um, but once it's left overnight it's grand you know it, it's quite solid it glues up perfectly but uh, you do have to wait so it kind of slows down post progress on it so getting back here to step eight i'm going to get all the uh, the wheels done uh, there's a number plate there to go back onto the back of it um both sides there by the looks of it um we've got appear to be the uh, you know the the towing eyes there in the front you've got the tow rope and uh, another little piece there whatever that is I haven't the faintest idea okay and also it tells us to put on the track at this stage which I won't be doing as you know yourself 
Um, I, I although I probably will put it on, you know, and I'll glue up the track and put it together and install it. But um, I haven't. When I was putting the uh, the drive sprockets on, I haven't actually glued them in place. They're um, they can still pop off. Uh, reason being, obviously, enough for for fitting the track. It's easier to do it when you've got one not fitted or you know not glued into place. So I get them done. We'll come back and as usual, we'll have a little discussion and uh, have a look at it. Okay. Okay, now we're after getting this section done here. Okay, um, I'm after getting all the wheels on, I'm after getting uh, a few other little bits and pieces on. That piece, as you know, I already kind of uh, slotted it in. I have the wheels on, and I'm after doing the tracks as well and gluing them all in place. I'm after using super glue to get the tracks in place. Um, I wasn't going to initially just by looking at it I said you know I'll build it my normal way it's just that these tracks here were so tight and all that um, they needed to be to kind of get the sag into them so I needed to sort of super glue the track to the wheels um, so that they would sag uh, the tracks themselves now they don't glue you have to heat them you know have to melt them together um, even super glue won't work, kind of work for them. It'll hold them in place, but the minute you put any bit of pressure on them at all, they pop. So uh, you do have to kind of melt them together. Once that's done, you know, they, they, they melt together in the ordinary way. There was no problems with them. Um, also, these here, the you know, the number plates there at the back and the uh, the one at the other side, kind of like a drop-down mudguard. Um, it shows here about fitting them there at the end, right? But if we go into our next one here, we'll see here that we're adding on uh, these the mesh bits down, and as you can see, it doesn't show the um, the uh, the mud guards in place. So it's a case of uh, I didn't know what to do, so what I decided to do was just when in doubt, leave them out. So I left them off. You I mean I can always add them on later? I have them here. I have the two pieces here. There's one, and there's the second one. Okay. There they are. Right. Now they're either number plates or number. Or, well, they are number plates. Just so I'm gonna say they're either number plates or or, or, or fenders. You know, uh, mud guards, but uh, they are sort of number plate holders. So we more than likely we'll get them fitted but we'll get them fitted later on we'll have a quick look at them and see how they go on for finish because uh you know i want to have everything else in place first um anything else really to say about it before we have a look at it uh not really uh again it's down to the plastic these here the wheels being so thin they were very very flimsy um, as I said that uh, that glue it doesn't kind of it takes a good while to actually set up that you can actually you know use the piece for so it was literally a case of we just glued all the wheels together in their pairs you know that those two got together these two got together you know glue them in their pairs and then sort of wiggle them on so we'll have a quick look at that so I got the wheels in place as you can see and the track has got the nice sag in it and everything else. Um, took a bit of work, took some time, got everything in place, everything super glued on and then I realised I have one track going one way and I have the other track going the other way. And they're super glued in place. Now I could sort of rip it all off and kind of do it but the chances of breaking or damaging something are very freaking high. So what I decided to do was say shit and leave it. Simple as that, you know. It's one of these things. And uh, I think I watched. I think it was Hamakar Barkas, Barkas, whatever his name is, did a video there once, and he showed uh, um, old pictures and things, old photographs of uh, tanks and things. And it it literally showed sort of the direction of track and 
he showed one particular vehicle and it was like that one track was going one way and the other track was going the other and uh, I think in the same video he showed that uh, in here it very rarely gets clogged up with mud the people always had loads of mud in around this area and he showed it I mean it, it, it's very rare very very rare for that to actually happen um, if it's left build up obviously it will but um, usually just by the tracks sort of flopping around and anything else it, it doesn't it, mud doesn't kind of stick in those areas so here we are those the, 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 the those in place as I said um, the front axle is all in place um, I didn't glue on the uh, the tow rope either I just have it laid over laid over it like that I will glue it in place after I've sort of painted everything because I get the I mean the number of places I got to go in here and I could imagine now if that was sort of glued into place that fits over that there. If that was sort of glued into place, you'd never get in there to put on the number plate. Well, you would, but it'd be very freaking awkward, I'll tell you that much. So I decided to leave it off. I can, you know, glue it in place after. Not too worried about that. Um, also, if you remember when I was doing the building, I got this section here. That uh, this little marker had uh, pinged off somewhere but I found it I found it I actually if I can stood in it the other night and I was wondering what the hell was stuck to my foot and that's what it was the great thing about super glue picks up everything um so I found the marker okay so that's back on now again so that's it so far let's move on okay so we're on now to step nine and step nine we're fitting the uh, a few other little bits and pieces onto it now. We're fitting um, our mesh sides, which we made up earlier on. Okay. We're also fitting our rifle holders. Right. So we're getting them fitted. Um, we've also got a few more uh, little bits and pieces here. We've got a kind of a we'll call it a safety rail. We've got some safety rails there to put on, and we've got a little ho two little holders or something or other that pop into these little holes here. Okay, so we've got to get all them done. Now, the thing about these here, uh, yeah, I'll fit them. I was going to say I won't bother fitting them until I know exactly where they go because they're going to be holding on the gun, but um. It does show that they're, you know, they're, the the U is pointing forward, so we can carry on with that. So I get that section done. Um, then we come back, we'll have a look at it, and then we're on then to the gun. Okay, getting the gun all made up and everything else. So we get them done, and as usual, we'll come back, quick discussion, see how that all went. Okay, so we're back in here and we're on step nine. In step nine, what I'm after doing is I'm after fitting the, uh, the mesh side skirt thing thingy majiggies. Uh, these two little holders, uh, a rail system across the back here, and the uh, the two rifle holders on the front mud guards. So let's have a quick look at them. Uh, there we go. Oops, the mesh is on. Um, personally, I don't like the fit of the mesh. I thought it could be a little bit neater here in the corners, but um, it's on anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, no, it is kind of my fault down here I didn't sort of push it in far enough when I was gluing it so we've got a gap here see that there we've got a, a big gap uh, that is my fault um, I did try and move it since once after I noticed it uh, unfortunately I can't well that one was it's kind of a 
perfectly glued in place. It's all kind of melted together. Uh, the glue did what it's supposed to do. So uh, unfortunately, that's uh, I, I can't move that. Um, I could, I suppose, try and remove, take that off, and see can I fit it back on again. Going to give it a try in a while. If I can, I can. If I can't, I can't. Um, here's those two. Uh, that bar here. Okay. The support bar, and we've got the um, the rifle holders as well. Uh, I don't don't really like the fit on them. Could be a bit better. Um, this time it's not down to me, it's down to the actual pieces. They just seem a little short and this is kind of off. If you can get a kind of close look in there and that one, that piece there. You see what I mean? Now I got them to fit because it, it's pushed in all the way so it won't go in any further. But yet this piece here doesn't seem to want to um, fit down into place. Um, been playing around with it for a while. The only thing I think of is say basically super glue it and push it down into place. Um, I've tried ordinary gluing it and pushing it down into place, but it just keeps popping up again. Um, I suppose I could kind of put a bit of glue on that whole arm there, which would soften it and then kind of move it in a bit because it's just it's just slightly out. As you can see, okay. I don't know if you can really make it out or not, but uh, there we go. Yeah, if I could kind of push it in a bit, just a tiniest little bit, just make it that little bit neater because it's not neat. And I mean, these are German vehicles, and they were that everybody knows the German engineering was precise and neat and over engineered and everything like that. Um, I don't think they'd have let something quite as. Uh, gross shall we say get away with that um, and it's the same on this side as well so like I said I might a bit of the glue uh, that um, to me extra thin and that might soften it out a bit and then be able to kind of push it in so I'm going to give them a try and try and fix the back of that um, if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't simple as that okay then we're on to step 10 no, step 10 has us making this piece here, okay. What it is, is basically a, uh, the base for the gun, really. Um, the base platform for the gun. So, I get that made up a couple of, couple of little bits and pieces. I'll do the step, uh, step 10. Yeah, step 10. And step 11 here, we're doing a couple of more little sub-assemblies. We've got another... Uh, round turntable part that's got two um, two say leg controls by the looks of it. Uh, we're also putting the gun together here, the two sides on the gun and the mag sticking a magazine in and we've got what appears to be a seat of some kind. So I get up those couple of little sub assemblies done and step ten and we'll come back and we'll have a quick look at that. Okay. Okay, so I'm after getting step 10 done, and I'm also after getting step 11 done, right? But before we have a look at them, I'm after getting that gap there fixed on that, okay? Literally just <laughs> used brute force and ignorance, mostly ignorance, and I popped off the uh, the offending piece and, and re-glued it back on. I didn't want to go putting too much pressure on it earlier on. Um, but it, it needed it. It needed it to be it needed a bit of brute force. Okay, so I've step ten done. Okay, there's step ten. All right, we've got the base of the uh, the gun. All right, there's step ten, which is which is this. I'll just pop it up to you there. Okay, and then step eleven. Right. When I initially showed it, I just showed it that was step 11, but it goes over the whole way, it covers the full page, right? So we've made up the seat, the gun, the base for the uh, the gun, and we also started putting on the uh, the side holders for it as well, okay? Um, so we start off with the, uh, the gun itself, right? 
got us uh, now done. Um, I've also drilled out the end just a little bit. Okay, it, it wasn't uh, like that. It was uh, kind of flat, so just just drilled it out just to make it look uh, real. <laughs> um, oh, come on, there we go. So there's uh, there's the gun, and here's that uh, the the, the, uh, the turntable part of that right with one side on so obviously the gun is going to um, fit in here somewhere possibly like that when the other one goes on the other side and then the gun will go up and down okay so that's as far as we've gotten so far so now we're on to step 12 and step 12 is another one of these big long ones Okay, we're fitting the uh, excuse me, moving the fitting camera and everything here. We're fitting the other side piece here. Right, there's the other side piece. That's the piece we already have on. So we're fitting the other side piece with some supports and fitting the gun in as well. Uh, it tells us not to glue in the gun. Obviously, no. If you want to uh, go up and down, have to have an up and down shooty thing. Right, uh, then we're fitting the, the seat, um, parts of, what else are we fitting? Fitting the uh, elevation and other wheels, the controls basically, and uh, the first of the, um, the guards, the side guards. So there's quite a lot there in that in step 12 right so I'll get step 12 done we'll come back then and we'll have a look then at uh, step 12 and do the usual critique on that okay okay so there's step 12 done right we'll have to get in the uh, the other side of the gun holding piece <laughs> the shooty thing that holds the or the holy thing that holds the shooty thing okay um, after fitting the seat the uh, the elevation and traversing wheels okay fit it onto the, uh, the carriage section and also fitting one of the gun shields to the front so we'll have a quick look at that there she is um, problems with that one or two little ones I must admit um, this piece here is after sort of coming off um, basically if you if you want the gun to be movable it is very freaking awkward um, I'm going to have to kind of set the gun in a position that I want it in, if you know what I mean, and then sort of glue it into place. Uh, not exactly what I wanted, but um, you know, it's, you know, like I said, uh, Pete. Did, I don't know what it, it must have been a fault of mine, you know, in, in this section, this piece up here. Whereas it was meant to move, I think a bit of glue got in there and kind of uh, sealed it in position because this piece here was supposed to pivot up and down on that. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't pivot. Um, so I, I, I'm left with the uh, the option of having the gun in, an, in a, you know an engaged position. So I'm going to have it say it like that. I just have to glue that piece here on right we get a close look at it there I just have to glue it into position uh, unfortunately um, like I said it's more than likely my fault I blame me rather than blame the kit uh, might be the kit but then again more than likely it's me <laughs> I'll 
like I said, I kind of, I, I wouldn't say I'm rushing this kit because I'm definitely not rushing it, but um, I'm not enjoying it, so therefore I'm not giving it as much uh, care and attention as I should. Um, I don't like the plastic, and um, I just, oh, I'm just not loving it. I'm just not liking this kit at all at all. Uh, I built up one of the figures there. Um, well. As in, when I say I built up one of the figures, I, I just put the body on the legs. Um, he sort of fits in here, leg either side of that. Uh, very, very hard to get get him into position. Get him in. Yeah, he. F right. You would have to kind of force him down. Now they do fit on. He just doesn't, it just doesn't, the whole thing, he just doesn't look right up there. Um, it's just, he just feels totally out of scale with uh, with the rest of it, do you know what I mean? Like if you put him, say, there where the driver's seat is, you know, even close to it, um, if you could sort of size proportions and things like that, uh, He's bloody well huge in there, you know. Um, I know he's. I know you're not going to get him in there, like his legs are, 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 are open. But uh, even still, he, he's freaking huge. And when you compare him to say a normal 135th scale figure, he's around the same height. I think it's just he's just chunkier, a bit too a bit too chunky for it. Um, so I'm not I'd like like again, you know. Loads of little things with this kit. I'm not loving at all. Um, it's purely down to the. Uh, I think there's about. If you ask me, there's about two or three different scales within the one freaking thing. There, I think is there one three two. The gun. It's sort of. I'd say one thirty-fifth scale, and, and the and the and the vehicle then is just slightly under that again. No, it might be me, or I, or I might just be totally out of it. But uh, it just doesn't look right. It really just doesn't. Um, I don't know. Not, I'm not liking it. I'm not liking it at all. I'm gonna finish it off though. I'm gonna finish it off. And, you know, you never know. When the whole thing is painted up and everything else. It might look fucking absolutely beautiful, but I don't. I don't know. So anyway. We've got another uh, one of these uh, shields to put on, okay. Uh, we'll be going for it in the open position because we're having the gun um, in action rather than in the stowed position. And the reason for that is because we've got the uh, sides of the, the, the mesh sides, we've got them down rather than up. So uh, we have to go for it in the, uh, the open position. A couple of little bits and pieces to go on there. Quite simple, nothing really to. Uh, it, it, it's kind of uh, almost the same as what that is, with an extra little piece onto it. And uh, then for finish, then we've just got two more pieces to go on. And uh, that's it then. Uh, that's basically the last of it. Why they're showing a step 15 here with nothing to actually do, I don't know. They're just showing the whole thing as made up. And uh, the last step then, step 16, we're just uh, putting it onto the um, onto the uh, onto the vehicle itself. So I'll do the last bit of it. Okay, we'll come out. We'll have a look at then the whole thing constructed and and, 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 and stuff, and that'll be the uh, the end of that. Then we're on to the painting, so like I said, um, it might all come together in the painting, it might look absolutely fabulous. Um, let's hope so, anyway. Let's hope so. So, I get the last few bits and pieces done, and that we'll come back then and we'll have a look. Okay, so there she is, part one construction is finished. There's the tow rope, I just, I just fell off there just before I did the thing. But it's not glued into place yet. As I explained earlier, I uh, will be putting the uh, the number plate on, and it's just just too hard to get it on before painting. Um, overall impressions, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. It, it's not a great kit. Um, I wouldn't put it up there with the likes of Tamiya or 
are definitely not dragon or any of those ones but uh, I mean considering its age and all that it's not a bad kit it's not a bad kit at all um, you know it, it's, it's like I said it is what it is um, I wasn't extremely impressed with it anyway but um, let's get it painted up anyway so we'll see what it, what it sort of finishes up at going to do a small little bit of filling here and there a small little bit of filling up here you see here there that gap there I'm not, not, not very happy with that ok see it there so I'm going to do a small little bit of filling in there although will I even bother because that's where the um, you know it is these things would open up anyway plus that's going to be down so it's, like it's going to be covered so I mightn't bother with it um, but I'm, going to, I'm going to get it painted up anyway we're going to paint it up um, the gun itself pretty okay um, you know it's pretty nicely detailed whether it's accurately detailed or not now I do not know uh, judging by the way the rest of the kit has been I I doubt it <laughs> but um, you know uh, I can't really you know I can't really say much about it like uh, like I said I didn't I didn't super enjoy building it um, I met with a lot of lot of silly little things that I don't like about it um, would I recommend it I suppose if you could find it um, you know because it's well out of uh, production and all that if you find it I wouldn't throw it out uh, you know you're going to have some bit of a, a challenge in building it and if, that, if that's what you want then you know fair play to you go off and get it so I'm going to leave it at that lads, the construction is done, just a couple of little tidy up bits I want to do, I want to see can I kind of do anything better with the, the these legs on the um, on the rifle mount holders there, um, it's one or two other little things that I mean I've spotted earlier on that I can't really kind of find now, um, <laughs> typical isn't it, I, I spotted them before I, got, I kind of did the record, started set play or record should I say but um, yeah it is what it is it is what it is so anyway let's, I'm going to leave it at that uh, don't forget to join me on part 2 where we get it painted and weathered and all that um, yeah I know it took me a fair old length of time to get it done but with what's happening in the world and stuff and I mean I work in healthcare so I've been quite quite busy so best I can do with it uh, like I said the fit wasn't the best plus there was a lot of warping in it um, a lot of the parts were quite warped um, due to age and you know how and, and storage and you know a bit of heat gets to it it gets a bit warm it'll warp and over time it's going to warp anyway because like I said that plastic it isn't like um, like the modern plastic that we're used to whereas you know it, it's it's not as flexible um, as this as this is. This is very very flexible plastic. It's, it's very easy to bend it and things. Um, you can even see it from that. You know, uh, you can't really do that with modern styrene. But um, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. So join me in part two. We get it painted and everything else, and uh, I'll see you in the next one, lads. So stay safe in the meantime. Enjoy your modelling and uh, look after your health. Don't forget, keep your hands well washed, uh, the social distancing and all that like thing. And if you're watching this in down the line, uh, this is all done during the uh, the start of the uh, COVID-19 thing. So, um, hence some of the, uh, the references throughout. Okay, lads, I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you haven't already if you have already thank you very much if you haven't subscribe and don't forget to give it the old thumbs up or the thumbs down you know it's up to you uh, personally I give this kit a thumbs down but um, you know me I, I'm not a professional or an expert builder by any means and um, if I'm not really into the kit I don't try to give it 100% so no, I definitely did not give this one 100% I must say I, I really didn't um, 
uh, you know, making all excuses here. I don't. I don't have any excuses to make. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't put uh, my heart and soul into making it. I didn't like the plastic. I didn't like the uh, the way some parts were warped, and it did sort of put me right off. But um, got it made anyway. So I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da.